She's got heart, she's got style, and she'll make it worth your while. She's got good news to help you get rid of the stress. Just relax and be blessed. to another show in the series the nadine blair show i really hope you've been enjoying the journey you know and if this is your first time watching there's a whole lot more that you have got to catch up on stories of inspiration pain what is it they say for the sports the thrill of victory the agony of defeat and speaking of thrill of victory and agony of defeat to all those whose team went home early i'm so sorry to all those whose team won the World Cup, hooray, hurrah, happy feel. Listen, I'm not so much of a football fan. I'm not so much of a sports fan. I remember when Jamaica was at the, um, the national, our national stadium and we had won and we were going off to the World Cup. Oh, I was there in the stadium. Mighty God, I was so enjoying the game. I don't understand a thing. And one of the times, I was so sure that the Jamaicans had just scored a goal. And I jumped up and I said, goal! And it was me alone standing up in there. <laughs> and then, the next time when we actually scored, I didn't stand up. Everybody else stood up around me. I felt kind of left out. But I said, you know what? I'm enjoying myself. I'm not going to let what people say or think or what my mind is telling me allow me to miss out on what is happening in the moment. And isn't that how we all live sometimes? We miss out on what is happening in the moment because we mind tell we say. Can you imagine if that woman who was bleeding for how many years had decided, I hear that Jesus is passing, but I'm not going to notice me. So let me just stay my, keep myself over here and no bother. And look, I'd have to go push through the crowd. And maybe they don't want to even see me or touch me or smell me. But this woman was determined. This woman decided, I'm going to push through this crowd. And she pushed to her victory. But there's another side of the story. You think Jesus did not know that she would have been pushing through? He was on his way to do another miracle. And he, I guess, maybe decided, let me walk this road on purpose so that this woman can push through for her victory. He was there walking through. And some of you feel as if Jesus not paying you any mind at all. Jesus is here to say to you today, push through. I know what I'm doing. I know the plans I have for you. It look rough now. Maybe you have been toiling for 12 long years. Maybe you spent all your money on all these bills and all these doctor's visits or all the pain that you've been going through. And all Jesus is saying, push a little more. Push past what people have to say. Push past how you may feel in your mind. Push and touch the hem of my garment. Hey, God, nice, you know. One morning, we went into a studio and we were getting ready to stream a live worship session for my aunt who does a weekly prayer time on Saturday morning. Boy, COVID brought out the best and the worst in us. And so we sat and we gathered and I remember LG was playing on the keyboards and uh, my, myself and Sabrina and uh, Christina were there and we were just rocking and somebody made reference to a song and I said, 
you turn storms into gardens. And then somebody else said, you speak peace in my sad days. You are God. And out of that beautiful time of worship came this song that I'm going to share with you. You see, this God can indeed turn the storm of your life into a garden filled with beautiful flowers and a story to tell. And my guest, why should they have so only pastam? But she has a beautiful story to tell. One called Speak. Here's a song. Enjoy. So before time began, he was God then. Right now, he's still God. He's still in charge. He's still sitting on the throne. He's still running things. He still has it under control. Nothing no frighten him. A micro no frighten him. Leviathan. Hey. Christina, let's go, let's go. Christina. You turn stone. Into gardens, you speak peace in my sad days. You are God, you are God. Sabrina, you raise light into darkness, giving beauty. season of the Nadine Blair show we have decided that we will be giving back we call it project hope 
and for this season we will be helping a mother of four children three of them are her own one of them well his mother decided she didn't want to have anything to do with him and so this mother took him on and she's looking after these four children all by herself now when you look at these pictures her home needs a proper roofing and we're going to make that happen for this season of project hope she's open to the elements wind rain creatures flying in and out and while they sleep well that's if they sleep she has to be on watch to make sure that all is well for the home visit spuropen.com slash project hope and give what you can and let's help them get their roof on and sealed project hope a part of the nadine blair show give back opportunity let's do this for the glory of god and for this mother The Nadine Blair Show comes to you with the kind support of Caribbean Gospel TV, CGTV, Light from the Caribbean, Lighting the World, Dr. Phil Entertainment, Great Audio, Great Video, Superior Quality, Love TV, Milan Events Rental, Luxury Lifestyle. Check them on Instagram at Milan Events Rentals, Gorgeous Flowers, Allison Dexter and Almade Designs, Embrace Medical Supplies and Equipment Limited, Consistent Supply of Quality Medical Supplies, Doctors to Health, Doctors Derek and Dorrit Sr., Providing the Best Care for All. Optimal Health, Allowed to Shine Ministries, and Hardcore Productions. Thank you so much for joining me again, the Dean Blair Show. And thanks for listening to that song. I hope it was a blessing for you. And of course, you heard about Project Hope, right? Please jump on board and let's get the roof for this woman i want to be able to show you the pictures of what you did just by your giving a couple months ago well was it pre-covid or during early covid she will tell us i was invited to a book launch and i was like what is young girl asking me to come and do a book launch anyway i was convinced i said okay i'll go a young woman releasing her book and I was so so impressed back then I do a feature called bookwise where I invite persons to read and you should I don't like reading so I do audible and I, I you know listen to books from time to time but yes I do make room for reading I was so so impressed that she had written her book but her story magnificent I'm talking about Trishan Smith Bryan. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm just excited to be here. I, I'm so excited <laughs> to have you here. I remember when you called me for the book launch mm -hmm. at that nice little restaurant and then it rained and everything. But a couple of things stood out to me for that, that day. You had a whole bunch of young people. <laughs> just a whole bunch of young people. And I love being around young people because y'all keep me young. And you were in charge of them and then i later heard that you call them the tribe yes ma'am we soon reached there so i bought how that but i got the book and i took it up and i started to read and your book is like a diary yes. to who to my readers to anybody who reads the book so it's their reader yes so like i just opened this now and it says Abuse is something you never truly forget. You heal, and the memories allow for growth and massive development, but the experience never leaves you. We're going to talk about abuse. What's your story, Chishan? Oh. Ah. So I was sexually abused um, pretty early in my childhood, um, and it continued for a couple of years. But I think a light that I'd like to shed even before we start getting too deep is that I lived a pretty normal childhood. I was, I was okay. I didn't actually remember any um, of this experience until I was maybe about 14 um, that the memory started, started coming back to me. So how old were you when, when it happened? I was maybe about four or five, then six, then seven. It, it, it was happening for a while. Oh, no, no. Yeah. 
So when you're 14 and you, the memory starts coming back, how are you processing this? It was chaotic. I honestly don't think I was processing well. I thought at first that I was going crazy. Because I'm like, I, I have no recollection of ever going through this thing. So where are these thoughts coming from? Am I watching too much TV? Like, what, what am I watching? What, mm -hmm. what have I exposed myself to that would cause me to be thinking this way? But as the days went by, and I think the memories really came in like, floods like it was just mm -hmm. going on and on for days for weeks i realized that this was this was, this very was real this is something that actually happened what was it that caused the memories to start coming back i have no clue i have absolutely no idea um at that point in my life i think there was just this drastic change i was in about grade nine i was gearing up for exams i think things were going well um I had a major shift in my family. I'm, I'm tearing up, but I had a major shift in my family. And I what think was it? I can't share that story yet, but it's gonna come real soon. But I think at that point with that experience, it triggered the other traumatic experience. And then all at once, um, I had to be As dealing with them back to back, yeah. Yeah. So a 14 year old, what do you do? Who do you talk with? I didn't. I didn't talk to you. You keep it to yourself? I did indeed. Why? I wasn't sure if I needed to talk about it. I wasn't sure if the thoughts that I was having were valid enough to have to express them. I thought that, you know, if this could have happened so many years ago and I was fine, then maybe I can be fine for a little bit longer mm. and I won't actually need any help. When did you realize that you needed the help? About a year later. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how you're smiling now. Yeah, I mean, it shows that you've processed, you've processed and it. And I have. And you, you are able to talk about it. But yeah, what happened a year later? I had this English teacher who I love with all my heart. And I just thought that as she would come to my English classes, that she's the one. You, you should probably talk to this one. She, mm. she looks Thank God for talkable. teachers. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And I... I saw her one day at school. I actually waited on her. I was, I was very intent on just getting this off my chest. I really needed to talk about it. And as she was coming from the staff room, I waited and I, I pulled her aside and I said, hi, I was sexually abused, I need help. Just like that, just like that on the corridors, I, I just blurted it out and you could tell that she was a little bit shaken up. Yeah. She was like, what? Okay, yeah. um, okay uh, I have a class now, but let's talk after school and we did. Yeah. What was that like? That spilling and... Oh, wow. Um, it was honestly an overflow. And I think further down in our conversations, I realized that I had so much to pour out. That I think even for her, it was overwhelming. Because this was the first time I was detailing this entire experience to anyone. And so I didn't hold back. I was just talking about it and pouring it out and telling her all the details of what I remembered, what I felt, what I went through. And... It was so much, but she, she wore it like a G. She really, mm -hmm. she really stood by me, and I really appreciated that. Um, were you ever? Did you ever feel sorry that you shared it with her? Not at all. Happy. So, what did the counseling end there, or did you get professional counseling? What What did that look like? What was that journey? I did get professional counseling. Mm -hmm. So she referred me to our school's guidance counselor, mm -hmm. and then from there, I was a little edgy about counseling because at this point. My parents didn't know. I hadn't told my parents anything. And at that age, they would have had to, you know, reach out to my parents and let them know, hey, this is happening. So I think as soon as I realized that my counselor was going to con contact my mom, I was like, okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. I think I'll be fine. And I opted out of it and I, I just disappeared. I didn't go back to any sessions. But I realized that I was very frustrated with how I was feeling. Um, I was just far too overwhelmed. I was crying every day. I started sitting at the back of the class. I was struggling. Um, so I reached out to a few friends that I knew that would really make sure I got the help. And I started official counseling. How did the breaking it to your parents go? So they didn't actually know about this entire experience until Time. I released this book. <laughs> yeah. They heard my story through my book. 
All right, so uh, we're going to come back to there. Okay. But, but, but let's, you, so you had friends. What kind of friends are we talking about? Are these Christian friends, your school friends, your church friends? Who? who? They were adult Christian friends. So I had some adults in my corner that really looked out for me mm -hmm. um, for a long while. And I, I knew that I could lean on these people, so I, I pulled for them. Mm -hmm. um, and they really got me the help that I needed. Yeah. And they're still in my life right now, so I really appreciate that. What, what, did, what does help look like? The, it, does it, it entail prayer, um, talking? What, what does it look like? Help really, it, it comprised of prayer and crying sessions and some bad up moments and some real, just some real talks that, hey, this happened, you went through it, but you have to survive, you have to push, there's mm -hmm. more to life than this. And it took me a while to really believe that, but now that I do, I couldn't see it any other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not down enough. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, how many years did it take for the turning around of the table? My God, my God. Honestly, I could say to you that I really didn't start seeing a change in my mind until maybe early 2020, just mm -hmm. before I released the book. Mm -hmm. um, I was writing the book for over a year and I was really struggling. I was going through counseling. I was diagnosed with clinical anxiety and PTSD. I was struggling with insomnia. I had eating disorders. I couldn't really function. I was and all of this was related to what you were going yes, through? it was. Um, and so I had to be on medication to sleep. I had to be on How sleeping How old were pills. you at that time? At that time, I would have been around 18. Are you on all of these things? Yeah. Yes. And you were going to with school now? I was in pre-university be... at this time. So I had just left sixth form. I was going to pre-university, just about to go into my first year of UE. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's the importance of support. Yes for me um just listening to you but there must have been something that pushed you to get support were you ever suicidal i was for a long 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 time i would cut myself i would try to overdose on pills i think even now i'm so scarred from trying to overdose that i feel like i try to push through regular pains like headaches and tummy aches and not have to take pills for them because i'm like I want to stay as far away from these things as possible, even though I'm still not, I'm not there anymore. It feels like a trigger to me because I used those things to help to ease other pains. Um, and they didn't work. Yeah. So you started writing. I started Who writing. encouraged you to write? Who encouraged me to write? I, I actually don't know. I always kept a journal growing up. My mom always thought it was interesting that when you get little ice cream money from your grandparents, I'd prefer to go to a bookstore um, and buy books and buy journals every time she was going out. I'm like, Mommy, can you buy me a new diary? The one that yes. I have done. done. I need a new one. <laughs> can we get pink pens? I need a purple one. So, so can you can write, write certain some things. Yes. And so I always kept a journal. I was always writing. I was always reading. And so I thought, if I can't vocalize how I feel, why not write about it? And then I, back to how you were writing, mm -hmm. Dear Reader. Yeah. Is that how you started the writing? When, when you kept your journal, mm -hmm. were you always writing Dear Reader? Or was it Dear Trishan? Or was it Dear Diary? It was always Dear Diary. Mm -hmm. It was always Dear Diary. But I think at first when I started writing, I just wanted to get my thoughts on paper. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were very jumbled. Therapeutic? It was. It definitely mm -hmm. was. I, I could see my words, I could go through them, I could assess how I was feeling, I could think about it, I could dwell on it, and I could really visualize where my mindset was at. Mm -hmm. And I think reading my own words was what gave me the jump start oh. to actually push myself to oh, get better. That's interesting, yeah. um, reading your own words. So the, the writing of it is therapeutic, mm -hmm. but reading it back to yourself as okay. if you're reading a Jane Doe. Yes. Mm. I wanted to see myself through myself because I felt like for a long time I was detached. That deep. <laughs> Thank you. I can quote that. I can write it down. I want to see myself through myself. That's <laughs> all. Okay, carry on. <laughs> I really wanted to get into my own mind because yeah. 
psychoanalyzing oh, itself? Oh, my God. I, I think it helped. It yeah. definitely helped. I, I didn't know who could actually hear my full story and take it. I knew that it was a lot for anyone to carry, um, for anyone to hear, for anyone to think about. And I felt like I didn't want to be that burden for people. So I needed to, to find a way to get it out mm-hmm. without feeling like I was killing people with my story. Were I you? wanted Go ahead. I wanted to find some light in it, some way to, to, mm-hmm. to make it make sense. And so writing it down and rereading it and writing again and going back through and, and well, this isn't detailed enough. Something else happened. Let's write about that. Let's not hold back. Let's, let's put more into this because you want to get your whole mind out on paper so that you're never withholding mm-hmm. how you really feel. Yeah. Um, were you popular in school? Was, it, was any part of the struggle trying to find your identity in others or, you know, was it just the abuse mm. and I, when I say just the abuse I'm uh, not making it small no no I yeah. get you I, I popular is such a strong word but yes <laughs> I was always a choir kid from summer school so the moment I started school on um, the September of that year I was immediately the choir kid so people knew me as a singer my principal knew me as Miss Choir Director mm-hmm. so people knew me and I I guess people saw me as a social butterfly I was always interacting with people Mm -hmm. and so at this point when this was hitting i really pulled back and so my teachers were concerned yeah they are different they they were terrified Mm -hmm. i remember um i think report days when your parents had to come to school when mommy was there they'd be like there's something happening with your daughter she's suddenly sitting at the back of the class and back of the class it it was a drastic move from someone who always sat in the front always sat in the front mm. and the back it so the last student would be here and i'd be all the way here the the very back way of the around class. the way around the back nobody else around there yeah and i i just felt like it was too much to be around people um the flashbacks that were coming were triggered if people touch me if if they bump into me on accident if if they say a particular word run a certain joke it was too overwhelming i thank god that you pushed and you pushed with writing and and with expressing yourself and with the tribe we're going to talk about that when we come back i'm talking with trishan and we'll have more on her story and her journey right after this break you're watching the nadine blair show the Nadine Blair Show comes to you with the kind support of Caribbean Gospel TV, CGTV, Light from the Caribbean, Lighting the World, Dr. Phil Entertainment, Great Audio, Great Video, Superior Quality, Love TV, Milan Events Rental, Luxury Lifestyle. Check them on Instagram at Milan Events Rentals, Gorgeous Flowers, Allison Dexter and Almade Designs, Embrace Medical Supplies and Equipment Limited, Consistent Supply of Quality Medical Supplies, Doctors to Health, Doctors Derek and Dorrit Sr., Providing the Best Care for All optimal health allowed to shine ministries and hardcore productions sing your song by nadine blair available on amazon or call 876-550-1154 welcome back to the nadine blair show you know that old hymn some through the water some through the flood some through the fire, but all through the blood. And your story may not quite look like Trishan, but you are going through. Ron Canole says, if you catch hell, don't hold it. And if you're going through hell, don't stop. Even if you are a shattered soul. Is that it? Yes. Describe what that is, Trishan. I, <laughs> I find that there are a lot of people walking around with broken pieces of themselves that are still searching um, for who they are, who they could be, um, who they were before they experienced any type of traumatic experience. Um, And you walk around with all these pieces hoping that you find a way to put them together. And some people never do. Some people die with all that potential. Um, I think it is Miles Monroe that says that the richest place on earth is probably the cemetery. So much untapped potential that people die with. Yeah. And so people black out mm-hmm. parts, maybe not even on purpose, 
but maybe the brain in a bid to survive yes is saying put this over here in file 13 of the brain somewhere I, I I start my book by saying the experts call it delayed recall and that was the first term I learned um, about this specific type of memory loss mm -hmm. but um, there is a study that says that when the brain is unable to process a particular situation or memory or experience that it locks it locks it away in boxes or mm -hmm. areas in the mind until you're able to handle it until your brain is really able to, to, to deal with this situation. And so I felt like growing up, especially throughout my childhood, I had no clue how to deal with all these experiences being abused. And so when I was finally able to, my mind just went, yeah, 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 it's time. It's right. time, let's go. Right. Yeah. It's amazing how God makes us, mm -hmm. you know, and thank God that you were wise enough to run to the teacher for help. Yeah. But then you go and you start a tribe. <laughs> Why? I and then describe what the tribe is. No problem. I wanted to find other young people who are just as passionate about discovering themselves. I think on my healing journey, I learned a lot that it is imperative that we learn ourselves. That we discover who we are and that we help other people discover who they are. And so I... I just wanted to find some passionate young people who want to know God mm -hmm. and they want to know who they are in God and I found them. Wow. I found them. How did you find them? So I grew up in the New Testament Church of God and we always went to camp. And yeah. after every camp, there is a camp group that all the young people come into and the people that you probably never interacted with at camp, you might never know the group. Which were like a like a, group? Like a, a WhatsApp group. Okay. And so I... It was always this habit for the groups to be alive and well during the summer. Mm -hmm. And then by September, everybody gone more than business. Yeah. So the groups died down. Yeah. And I think as it was approaching the end of that summer, I think 2018 or 2017, I was like, there's something in me that wants more from mm -hmm. this group, this experience, these people. I, I want a lasting community. And so I, I sent a message in the group. I'm like, hey, guys. Um... If there's anyone who wants to just hold on to this moment, can we just gather together? Let's make a new group and let's let's start fresh. Let's start something. Let's start a family. Wow. And so it was at first a Bible study group. And at the time And how old are you now? How old were I'm you? I'm twenty two. I started the tribe when I was eighteen. And what age group are we looking at? Well right now it's from like twelve to like twenty five. So there are people older than me. In the group, 26. So you just meet together for Bible study virtually or in person? So it started off virtually because the tribe members are from all over Jamaica. Right. And we do have... And different denominations. Right. All, my God, the apostolics are there. The SDAs are there. They're all there. Wow. And it was never an issue where you're from. We, we never really cared where you're from. Right. Um, but we started the group as a Bible study group. And at that time, it was just me because... I was a visionary. So everybody's just like, well, we're following you. What are we doing? <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh, okay, um, let's learn about God then. And so we would start discussing things about the Bible. And, you know, you blow up the group, 500 messages, 1,000 messages. Wow. And we'd just be talking about God every day, every day, for a year, for two years. It was just like that. And there were people who came together and they spoke about some of their most intimate experiences in life that they never spoke about ever before with people who they had never met. Even right now, I have yet to meet half of the tribe and that's my family. They, wow. they, they poured out their hearts into that group, into a space of young people that they have learned to love and cherish as family, yeah. but they have never, never ever met face to face. And look at God. Yeah. Oh, him just line you up. After all these years of pain, yeah, you pushed like that woman. You pushed, and then through your healing, it's like one day I I was and and, and I'm gonna go to ministry now, <laughs> but I was listening to um, a story, one of those stories that um, I was talking about that I listen on Audible, and 
the one of the characters was encouraging his wife and he was saying that Jesus one of the times when Jesus was on the on the sea and he spoke there was a storm yeah. it was more than one boat in the storm and so he's in boat a or whatever boat you want to call it uh, but the other persons are affected by this storm and he speaks peace to the storm and it affects this boat but it also affected the other boats yes. and so the peace that god gives to you trishan to you who are watching it is for you yes but it also is for the others that are around you and so it's never limited your peace, your joy, your rescue, your hope, your this, whatever. We are so connected. It's never limited to just me. Mm -hmm. It's for you and you and you and everybody. And so you used your peace be still. And you affected or effected change in the lives of all these people. And guess what? There are other boats because it's not limited to their boats, their boat, to their boat there. It's also the boats that they are connected to. Hmm. I love this. I don't love the pain that you went through. I don't love the hurt that you felt, but I love what you made. You, you allowed yourself to, to listen to God and to make, turn that around for your good and for his glory and you will never ever know how many lives you will truly touch and truly affect you may never know you may never know how many people you stopped from committing suicide even when you still struggle with you may never know I thank God that he shone his light on you and you allowed the light to shine on you, Trisha. You are gold. You are beautiful. And I thank God for you. Me not done. Come on, people hear <laughs> other things about you and cry from people say. <laughs> you know, you also have their writer. Yes, ma'am. At the back of your book. Hallelujah. Why? God gave me the marvelous idea of writing about how I felt. And I think after reading all my words, that my readers also have something to say. Mm. So we're flipping the script. Uh -huh. It's now, Your dear turn. writer, you, I may not ever see what you write at the end of this book, but you will. Yeah, and so even though my story ends right there in that book at yeah. the last page, the last paragraph that you see, the last letter that you get, mm -hmm. you get to continue your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about writing it back to you, but it's really yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. Wow, I want you to look in the camera. Oh, yeah, it's that time, <laughs> and I want you to speak to those who feel unworthy feel unloved, feel that it's their fault, feel lost. And even those who feel happy too, because they're those, what's your word to them? Oh, this is, I want to start by saying that you are loved. Mm -hmm. You are loved beyond measure. And that has to be a starting point always understand that there is so much more to life than the trauma that you went through it doesn't define you it doesn't define where you're going it doesn't define who you are you are something because of where you come from mm. you are something because of god who made you and so whenever you look at yourself in the mirror whenever you stand whenever you sit whenever you speak whenever you breathe know that you are doing so with purpose in your veins that you are doing so with purpose in your life and that what you have been created with is for this time for this season for this generation for the next generation you have an impact in your blood mm -hmm. and there are people waiting on you to get up and see yourself as more than 
depressed, as more than broken, as more than someone who is struggling with anxiety, as more than someone who is damaged, but knowing that you are beautiful and that it is so possible for you to heal and overcome. You will overcome. I remember one day I was singing um, Breaking Chains and I got a revelation. I said, wait there, you overcame. I overcome. He overcame. Yes. I over you were there when we're taking yes. Oh, by the way, she sings with perpetual praise. <laughs> ah. Yeah. He overcame, so we overcome. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of it. That's it. And that's what I love about God. He finishes every story before he even decides. Oh, well, yeah, okay. He can go now. So he doesn't send you off without a plan. My God. He finishes your story. And then he puts you in it at the starting point and he says, Well, I finished this for you. Ooh. So go. Go. Um, Phil, I can't get to pan dance. Woo. Trishan Smith Bryan. You are a diamond. Shine bright. No, wait. Shine brighter. Because the Jesus in you brings the light. You've been through so much, lived through so much, grew up too fast with pain that was too harsh and above your age, your stage. But somehow your faith kept you floating, growing, increasing in the knowledge of him who is able to keep you stable when life wanted to label you done. Christ said, no, I won. Now you win. Each day tell your heart to sing as you lead the tribe. Write books and sing rhymes. Steady your mind and climb in God's lap. I'm going to stop right there. Climb in God's lap. That's your safe place. That is your safe place. Let me look in. The, get me this camera. That is your safe place. Man, woman, boy, girl. That's your safe place. In God's presence. In God's hands. You are safe. Hallelujah. Climb in his lap. Divine, constant, and renewed healing is always yours may you never be stirred to give up but continue to give more and don't watch the times watch god your foundation sure carry on trisha i believe in you live ready live love forgive easy oh, this is beautiful <laughs> You are beautiful. Thank you. I love you. <gasps> I love you so much. You have me crying. And on every TV. time, every time your heart needs healing. He's a healer. And every time you can't find the words to the song, he's a songwriter. And every time you feel like your head is bent down, he's a lifter of your head. I bless you. And I pray that God will strengthen you as you lead. You think there's only 100 people you're going to have? I'm sorry, God, what's up? I forgot to make room for you. <laughs> when more young people start to write and say, can I be a part of the tribe? What you going to do? I'm going to let them in. Ah, I'm always so, so blessed. Thank you, Trisha, for being here. Absolutely. No problem. Keep shining. Okay, so I'm going to... O'Neill, who does my makeup and does it so well. Thank you. But may I forgot come here. I forgot to fix up this now. <laughs> People, thank you so much for your support. And for those of you, please let me know how, how you are blessed. How this helped you. How it helped a friend of yours. 
and how you are moving to help somebody else. Let's start our own tribe. Wink, wink. <laughs> and maybe you can start your own movement and help somebody as you pass along. Your living will not be in vain. Thank you for watching the Nadine Blair Show. Don't forget Project Hope. Let's spread some love this season and help this woman. I'm going to be showing you the pictures. I'm going to be showing you what you have done. Project Hope. Watch the video and keep locked for another The Nadine Blair Show. Catch you later. For every season of The Nadine Blair Show, we have decided that we will be giving back. We call it Project Hope. And for this season, we will be helping a mother of four children. Three of them are her own. One of them, well, his mother decided she didn't want to have anything to do with him. And so this mother took him on and she's looking after these four children all by herself. Now, when you look at these pictures, her home needs a proper roofing. And we're going to make that happen for this season of Project Hope. She's open to the elements, wind, rain, creatures flying in and out. And while they sleep, well, that's if they sleep, she has to be on watch to make sure that all is well for the home. Visit spuropen.com slash Project Hope and give what you can and let's help them get their roof on and sealed. Project Hope, a part of the Nadine Blair Show Give Back Opportunity. Let's do this for the glory of God and for this mother. Sing Your Song by Nadine Blair, available on Amazon or call 876-550-1154. The Nadine Blair Show comes to you with the kind support of Caribbean Gospel TV, CGTV, Light from the Caribbean, Lighting the World, Dr. Phil Entertainment, Great Audio, Great Video, Superior Quality, Love TV, Milan Events Rental, Luxury Lifestyle. Check them on Instagram at Milan Events Rentals, Gorgeous Flowers, Alison Dexter and Almade Designs, Embrace Medical Supplies and Equipment Limited, Consistent Supply of Quality Medical Supplies, Doctors to Health, Doctors Derek and Dorrit Sr., Providing the Best Care for All. Optimal Health, Allowed to Shine Ministries, and Hardcore Productions. My God reigneth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of myself, eh, I'm on a pew pew God in our serving now, be exalted. God, he liveth, he reigneth, he sits supreme, he is God over all gods, everything that was created was created by him, he reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Jehovah is your name. Come on, somebody worship God. Jehovah is your name. Everybody sing now. Jehovah, Jehovah. Compassing Jehovah is your name. Just follow me, come mighty warrior. Let's go right there. Take it out. Say, mighty warrior, great in battle. Who are you, great mountain? Jehovah is.
and you take first place, everything has to go back. Woo! All mountains must bow. All problems must go. My God. All sickness must bow. Hey God. So we place you at the highest place. Oh my God, above principalities, above powers. My God, we, we, we just relax in you. We relax in you this afternoon. We, we joy in you, in the God of our salvation. I know it's a recording, but I want you to worship. Go a little deeper, go a little deeper, go a little deeper. Jesus, you be lifted. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Oh God, mighty is your name. Mighty is your name. Mighty is your name. The Nadine Blair Show comes to you with the kind support of Caribbean Gospel TV, CGTV, Light from the Caribbean, Lighting the World, Dr. Phil Entertainment, Great Audio, Great Video, Superior Quality, Love TV, Milan Events Rental, Luxury Lifestyle. Check them on Instagram at Milan Events Rentals, Gorgeous Flowers, Allison Dexter and Almade Designs, Embrace Medical Supplies and Equipment Limited, Consistent Supply of Quality Medical Supplies, Doctors to Health, Doctors Derek and Dorrit Sr., Providing the Best Care for Optimus. Optimal Health, Allowed to Shine Ministries, and Hardcore Productions. Sing Your Song by Nadine Blair, available on Amazon, or call 876-550-1154. For every season of the Nadine Blair Show, we have decided that we will be giving back. We call it Project Hope. And for this season, we will be helping a mother of four children. Three of them are her own. One of them, well, his mother decided she didn't want to have anything to do with him. And so this mother took him on and she's looking after these four children all by herself. Now, when you look at these pictures, her home needs a proper roofing. And we're going to make that happen for this season of Project Hope. She's open to the elements, wind, rain, creatures flying in and out. And while they sleep, well, that's if they sleep, she has to be on watch to make sure that all is well for the home. Visit SpurOpen.com slash Project Hope and give what you can and let's help them get their roof on and sealed. Project Hope, a part of the Nadine Blair Show Give Back Opportunity. Let's do this for the glory of God and for this mother. <laughs>